a dull gray afternoon here on the shores of Lake Erie in Cleveland. The temperature is 56 degrees. The humidity is 80 percent. The wind will not be a big factor. It's eight miles an hour from the northeast, and chances of a shower are just about 50-50. The officials for the ball game this afternoon, the crew is headed by referee Tommy Bell from Lexington. George Pinard is the umpire. Ray Zoda is the head linesman. Bill Summers is the line judge. The back judge is Tom Kelleher. Rip Graff is the field judge. The Bengals are dressed in black this afternoon. This is the second and last time this year that the Bengals will wear black uniforms. The only other time was in the preseason game against the St. Louis Cardinals. The hometown Cleveland Browns are in white. Of course, we have a marked similarity in the uniforms of these two ball clubs, needless to say. So we could have uh, an interesting matchup here this afternoon between Don Cockcroft and uh, Horst Muehlman. They both are the leading scorers for both teams, uh, mostly on the field goal and extra point production. Horst has hit four out of seven. His longest last week was... Uh, 52 yards or 51, and uh, the longest uh, that Cockroft has made, he's had two out of five. His longest this year has been uh, 27 yards. So it's going to be interesting to see, and the uh, horse was putting them through from about 55 yards out before the game. So it'll be interesting to see what happens if they get within field goal range. Both Phillips and Robinson in behind Carter. Carter rolling out to his right, looking to pass. Has Thomas, gets him at the 38. Gets away at the 40, 45 to midfield and down to Brown's territory at the 48-yard line. He gave Eric Barnes the sideline pattern, and after he caught the ball, he cut back toward the middle of the field and left Barnes standing, and finally Mike Howell had to drive him down. Dale Lindsay, the linebacker on the left side, also collaborated to bring down Thomas. But the Bengals picked up about 24 yards on the play to the Cleveland 49 and a first down. Sam White will put the ball down. The lines are down. The ball is played. Here's Moorman's kick. It is good. It clears the crossbar by about three or four yards. A 50-yard field goal by Horst Moorman. So time is called with 11.44 left in the first quarter here at Municipal Stadium. The score of the Bengals three, the Browns nothing. Split left, Collins to the right. Again dropping back is Nelson. Throws out to Leroy Kelly on the right side. Kelly at the 30. Drops the ball, picks it up, and drops it to the 35-yard line by Ken Dyer. Gary Collins foot right, and the cornerback's up tight. Dropping back is Nelson. Throws down the middle. Kelly can't hold it at the 38-yard line. It'll be incomplete. Had he held the ball, it would still be short of first down yardage. Bill Berge was on pass coverage right on Leroy Kelly. And for the first time this afternoon, Don Cockroft comes in to boot for the Browns. Ernie Kellerman and Mike Hall of safety. Carter back to pass. Throws, complete the speedy Thomas at the 33, and he's dragged down immediately by Eric Barnes. That's the second pass reception of the afternoon now for Speedy Thomas. And Speedy, of course, is just that, and he's quick. And on aging Erich Barnes, the Bengals may be throwing a lot of passes in that direction this afternoon. First and ten, Bengals at the 32. Carter with the ball, gives off to Jeff Phillips, coming wide to the left. The flag is down on the play, and he's knocked down at the 33-yard line. Walt Sumner came up to the right cornerback spot. And Billy Andrews, the right side linebacker, circled the play. But I believe the left end, Ron Snyder, was offside. He came across the line of scrimmage before the ball was snapped. Crabtree split left, Speedy Thomas to the right. Carter again drops back to pass. Has the time, throws out on the screen. Robinson at the 35, down the sideline, 40. The midfield gets the block and knocks down at the 44-yard line. A next side tackle by Mike Howell. The screen pass set up beautifully. Walt Sumner over there to drag him down also to help out. The screen pass on the left side worked well that time. From the 38 down to the 44, it's an 18-yard gain on the play. And Carter is now 5 for 5, and the Bengals have a first down at the Browns 44. The corners and safeties about 5 yards deep. Carter gives off to Jeff Phillips, running wide to the right. He's got the corner turn. Gets by Barnes down inside the 35 to about the 34-yard line before Ron Snyder just drag him down. Out leading the interference was Pat Masson on that play. And that play went for just about 10 yards and a little more than 10 as they signal it to first down. Now Jeff Phillips moves a step over to the left in the backfield behind Carter who drops straight back to pass. The blitz is on. Phillips has the pass at the 35, down to the 30, and down to the 26-yard line he goes. A flag is thrown on the play. Jim Houston, the middle linebacker, came out of the backfield. Drag him down. But the penalty will be marked off against the Cincinnati Bengals. Crabtree, the left, Carter drops straight back. Look, fires down the middle, completes the Crabtree at the 40, 35, 30, 25, all the way down to the 20-yard line. The first pass of the afternoon from Virgil Carter.
Carter to Harry Crabtree, and that little water spider just jiggled his way down the center of that field again for a 29-yard gain before Eric Barnes could drag him down. And now Carter has hit seven straight passes. The Bengals are first and ten on the Brown 20-yard line. Carter rolling out to his left, drops back, fires down, Crabtree at the 10-5, he loses the ball, but sitting down, he picks it up and he has it at the two-yard line. Walt Sumner was over on pass defense, he got between Carter and the football, and as he spun around, he got hold of Crabtree's arm and he lost the ball, but Crabtree was sitting down and he just picked up the ball at the two-yard line, and that's where the Bengals will have it first and ten. First and goal at the two, Jeff Phillips in over right side, touchdown! Jeff Phillips went over right guard. Mike Wilson and Guy Dennis cleared the way. It's a two-yard touchdown by Jeff Phillips. And the Bengals have marked 82 yards to score, riding the passing arm of Virgil Carter and lead nine to nothing. To go to Scott, who tries to come around the left side. He's dragged down at the 23-yard line, right at the line of scrimmage. Bill Berge, the middle linebacker, was overcovering. Ken Dyer was there, so was Lamar Perry. And they held both out to no game. They came around the same side where both Moran and Kelly had lined up very close to the line of scrimmage. They were out there as blockers, but they could do nothing as the Bengals sifted through. But now with a third and six and a half, they send Hooker out to the left, Gary Collins to the right, Nelson drops back to pass. Throws the screen to Kelly. At the 20, up to the 25, and he's knocked out of bounds. Short, or just about at the 30-yard line. Ken Dyer knocked him out of bounds. Let's see where the official signals that he went out, and the Browns have a first down as Kelly got about a foot over the 30-yard line. Leading the interference was Joe Tafoni. Hooker left, Collins right. Nelson again drops back to pass. Fires out in the flat. Collins has it out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Cleveland first down. Mark Perry pushed him out of bounds. A quick down and out pattern from Bill Nelson to Gary Collins. And the Browns have a first down. On a draw play, Leroy Kelly is hammered by Mike Reed. Reed, who smells out that trap play extremely well, just bolted through, and of course there's nobody to block him. They try to block behind the line of scrimmage, but Reed is so quick, so quick reacting, that he just goes down in a very low position. So the Browns have a third and 13 now at their own 39-yard line. Nelson dropping back to pass. Look, fires far downfield, intended for Gary Collins, knocked away at the last moment by Fletcher Smith on a beautiful play. Collins had about a half a step on Fletcher Smith, and Fletcher just reached up around his shoulder and knocked that ball away, way down near the Bengals' 25-yard line, and Collins comes off disgustedly, and the Cleveland Browns will be forced to boot. The Jess Phillips who tries to worm his way over right tackle, and he gets maybe a yard. Walter Johnson, the left tackle, and Ron Snyder, the left end, were there to greet him. Virgil Carter looks over that Brown defense. Six men up on the line of scrimmage. Carter drops back to pass. Look, he's got him. He's in the end zone for safety. Walter Johnson got him. Virgil Carter tackled in the end zone by Walter Johnson, who first threw on him before he had any opportunity to do anything. Goes to 10 to 2 ball game now. Virgil Carter no sooner turned around in the end zone than Walter Johnson was right on top of him. And of course, this gives the Browns now good opportunity for field position. The Browns have their wedge set up at the 35. There's Lewis's kick, and it's a low driving one. It's not good. Taken at the 35-yard line, up to the 40, to the 45. Now reversing his field. Getting a block at midfield. Out of the Browns. Bengals 45 to the 40 and one out of bounds at the 39-yard line is Ken Brown. Lewis did not get the good boot, and Ken Brown made a sparkling run back. He came to the right side of the field, then reversed himself, outran a couple of Bengals tacklers, and the Browns are in great field position at the Bengals 39-yard line. Nelson dropping back to pass. Look, fires over the middle. It's complete. Down at the 15-yard line. Fighting his way inside the 10 is Milt Warren. On the key third and fourth play, Nelson went to his tight end, Milt Warren, who caught the ball at the 15-yard line, and then dragged the Bengal tackler down to the nine. Lamar Parrish and Ken Dyer finally dragged him down. Now Nelson drops back to pass. Fires over to Hooker. Incomplete. Flags are down. And it's interference against Hull. Ken Riley was covering Fair Hooker, and it looks as though it'll be pass interference against Riley. It will give the Browns the ball at the one-yard line. That's it. Pass interference called against Riley, and it's first down, goal to go at the one.
Nelson drops back to pass. Fires off with a flat touchdown to Leroy Kelly. Kelly caught the ball about at the one. Bergie was a couple of yards away from him. And all of a sudden, as a result of that safety, and the corresponding field position that follows, the Browns are right back in the ball game. It's now 10-8. to Don Cockroft goes in to attempt the extra point. Singles out of the huddle, Speedy Thomas foot right, and Sab three out to the left. Just Phillips and Paul Robinson are the running back. Carter gives off to Robinson, who goes nowhere, tries to run over the left side, and he's nailed by Billy Andrews, the linebacker on that side, but again a flag is thrown on the play. The interference was stacked up in front of Robinson that time, and he had no place to go. And off goes to Jeff Phillips, who's got no place to go. He's wrapped up by Walter Johnson, first of all. And they tried to cut back in, and Ron Snyder was right there. So were two or three other Browns. That play was held to no gain. There may have been a slight loss in the play. Let's see where they put the ball. Right at the 43-yard line, so it's no gain. And it'll be second and ten. Nine and a half minutes left in this second quarter. So Leroy Kelly comes wide around to the left. Out of the ten-yard line of the 15 and run out of bounds at the 16. Kenny Graham, the strong side safety, along with Ken Avery, the linebacker on that side, finally pushed him out of bounds, and they say at about the 17-yard line. So it's a gain of about nine yards. Nelson going back to pass. Throws out of the flat. Holt got dropped. It wasn't lateral. Back at the five-yard line. Royce Berry was right back there. No, it's ruled a forward pass. So it's incomplete. And it'll come back to the 20. And I think some of the Bengals are questioning the fact whether or not that might have been a lateral. It was very, very close. They'll bring the ball back to the 20-yard line, and the Browns will have a second and 10. Nelson again going back to pass. Same play, out to Scott at the 15. Up to the 20, gets to the 25, to the 30. 35 all the way out to the 38-yard line. Ron Carpenter finally dragged him down, along with Lamar Parrish, and it didn't work the first time. And the Browns came right back with it. Kenny Graham down at the bottom of the pile, all the way out to the 39-yard line for a 19-yard gain and a Brown first down. Quick pitch, Leroy Kelly coming wide to the left. Ken Avery, float him up, and Ron Carpenter drags him down. But Ron Kelly got about six yards off of the 47. Steve Chamazak over there to help out with the tackle. Kelly on the quick pitch. Nelson fakes, drops back to pass. Look, hit, and drops. It's a loose ball. Picked up Royce Berry to midfield. Down to the 40. Nobody near him. Berry will go for the touchdown. Nelson was staring. And Royce Berry picked up the loose ball at about the Bengals' 45-yard line. He was gypped out of one last week. And this one wants to be denied. And Berry showed those good hands again on a full run. He picked that ball up and ran it back. About 55 yards for a touchdown. And how quickly things happen. The Bengals are out in front now, 16 to 9. Nelson dropping back to pass. Look, fires over the middle. Collins has it down at the 38-yard line. A flag is thrown. It's going to be called pass interference against the Bengals on Fletcher Smith. Collins caught the ball. And Collins is coming out of the ball game. He caught the ball at the 38-yard line. Fletcher Smith was right on him, and that was a fine reception. Nelson fakes the handoff, drops back to pass. Fires the screen. It's complete at the 40-yard line. Up the midfield. Leroy Kelly down to the 40, to the 30, to the 20, and drag down, gets away. He's up the 15-yard line. Down to the 10, and finally all down to the 8-yard line. Green pass to Leroy Kelly, and he came all the way across the field. Got away from one man at the 20-yard line, got all the way down to the Bengals' 7 or 8-yard line, and Kelly may just be completely out of breath. He's getting up very, very slowly. He's just completely tired out of the 7-yard line. That was good for 55 yards. And the Browns have a first and goal at the 7. The Browns at the 4 as Nelson drops back to pass. Fires to Gary Collins, knocked down right at the goal line by Fletcher Smith. Fletcher's mad at himself for not intercepting that ball. He got one hand up. Third and goal at the four. Nelson takes the hand off to Kelly. Goes back, throws over the middle. Touchdown to Bill Warren. Warren beats Kenny Graham into the end zone. And the Browns now can move back within a point. It's now 17 to 15. Don Cockroft will come in to accept the extra point. It was a four-yard touchdown pass from Bill Nelson to Milt Warren.
And off goes to both Scott coming on the left side. He's up over the 30 to the 35 yard line. Ken Avery was the first man to get a hand on him. And then Kenny Graham, the strong side safety, dragged him down. But both Scott picked up seven yards on the play. Nelson back to pass, throws to Collins down and out. He has him out of bounds at the 47-yard line of the Browns. Buster Smith was on pass defense. Al Bochamp almost got a hand on the ball as he dropped back in his zone. But Nelson threw the ball perfectly. Nelson drops back to pass. Look, fires long. Intercepted by Kenny Graham at the 35. He's got a lot of running room to the 40. Up the midfield, out of the Browns 40. And down to the 33-yard line he goes. Kenny Graham picked that pass off, intended for Fair Hooker. And there was nobody back there, and the Browns are claiming that he fumbled. But he did not. He signaled the ball belongs to the Bengals. Kenny Graham, down at the bottom of that pile, a little slow getting up. And Kenny Graham is a little woozy as he gets up. It's helped off the field. But at the 36-yard line, the Bengals have it intercepted, and that was a good run back. Jess Phillips with the ball, running wide to the left, cuts in at the 35 and gets down to the 33-yard line. Bucked into Walt Sumner and gave him everything he had. Pulled over Sumner and picked up another couple yards. Billy Andrews, the right side linebacker, was there to help out. The ball is just short of the 33-yard line, so let's give Phillips three, and it'll be second and seven. Virgil Carter drops back to pass. Look, fires down the middle. He had incomplete. He had Bruce Cosman open down on the seven-yard line, and he led him too far. He had Ernie Kellerman beat by a full three or four yards. So it'll be third and seven for the Bengals. Bruce Cosman, the tight end, has not caught a pass this afternoon. That's the first one that's been aimed in his direction, and he was open. Sam White will hold. The ball is snapped back. Movement's kick is up in the air. It's plenty long. And it is no good. It's wide to the right. So time is called with 11-16 left to play in the third quarter at Municipal Stadium in Cleveland. The score remains the Bengals 17, the Browns 16. Sumner is a deep man up to 25, Shane at the 40. A low snap from center, but Lewis gets the kick away. It's a high boot and a good one. That is bounce. No fair catch the signal. A scramble for the ball. Where is it? At the 23-yard line. And the Bengals have the ball. There was no fair catch called. A real big blunder by the Cleveland Browns because the ball had not touched anybody and somebody tried to go for the ball then. And Ron Lamb recovered it for the Bengals at the 23-yard line. Sumner did not signal fair catch. He stepped in as though he was going to take the ball. Then did not take it. It hit and bounced. The Cleveland man touched it. And the Bengals with a big break have it on the Browns, 23, first and 10. Bengals at the Browns, 19. Carter takes the handoff, rolls to the right, looks, throws, it's complete to Speedy Thomas at the 11, and Eric Burns wraps him up and they push him back to the 14. But at the 11-yard line, it'll be a Bengal first down. And that's Speedy Thomas' third pass reception of the afternoon. Carter with the ball, takes the handoff, drops back to pass. Now he's running to the right, looks, and he's going to be thrown out of bounds at the 22-yard line. The man who got him was Ron Snydow. Dale Lindsay was right over there to make sure that he got no farther. Carter rolling out to the right, could not find Speedy Thomas open down in the end zone. They dropped double coverage back on him. Mike Howell was over there along with Erich Barnes. The ball is snapped back. The kick is up in the air, and it is good. The moment connects to the 23-yard line, and time is called with 406 left in the third quarter. The score now, the Bengals 20, the Browns 16. Takes the handoff to Leroy Kelly, drops back to pass. Fires out in the flat. It's incomplete. Intended for Gary Collins. Lamar Perry just knocked the ball right out of his hands out at the 42-yard line. It was a deep sideline pattern. Collins came down a little over 20 yards from the line of scrimmage. And when Nelson went back that time, he bumped into Leroy Kelly. And now Kelly and Nelson trying to get the thing straightened out. Nelson drops back to pass, has protection, now look, fires over the middle, it's complete the hooker at the 33, and he's wrapped up immediately, and that'll be a first down, a big third and nine play, the Browns got the first down at the 34, Ken Roddy, the cornerback, dragged him down, he had help over there from Al Coleman, the strong side safety, but it's a Browns first down and a big third down play. On a draw play, Leroy Kelly is smothered by Bill Berge as he gets just about back to the line of scrimmage. Ball is picked up as it's loose out of the 40 and running with it is Dick Gaffrath. 
That ball popped down. I didn't even see it come. Shaprath picked it up at about midfield. Was finally knocked out of bounds by Ken Riley. Very alert play by Shaprath, and the Browns have the ball at the Bengal 32-yard line after Kelly had been stopped. Nelson goes back to pass. Look, now it's hit, and it's a loose ball. It's kicked by the Bengals, picked up by Mike Reed, but it is long dead. And Reed can't believe it. Royce Berry was right in there again. The ball hit the ground. Nelson was really hammered back there at midfield. And Mike Reed picked the ball up, but it had been blown dead. And Paul Brown, I think, wants to talk to the official about that one, too. Nelson goes back to pass. Fires out in the right flat. It's complete to Collins with the 20 down to the 15 and out of bounds. He jumped up over the Lamar Perry or Fletcher Smith and caught the ball. Right at the 15-yard line, Collins caught it at the 20, right against the sideline. A magnificent catch by Collins. Al Coleman finally knocked him out of bounds, but the Browns are at the Bengals' 15-yard line. Nelson with the ball dropping back to pass. Look, throws, it's deflected, but it's complete at the 10-yard line, down to the 5, and 4 to the 3-yard line. The 2-yard line is both shot. That ball wobbled. It was deflected by a Bengal at the line of scrimmage, and they pick up 10 yards on the play and have the first down. Can you beat that? And that ball was deflected and came out of there like a wounded duck. Bengals with seven men up on their line of scrimmage. The Leroy Kelly running wide to the right. It's a five. Fergie hits him at the one. They drive him out of bounds just short of the goal line. Right at the one. They tried to go wide. And Avery, Berge, Berry were all over there. And they pushed him out of bounds after a gain of a yard. It looked as though Kelly would make it in the corner, but the Bengals covered it quickly. It goes to Leroy Kelly, running wide to the left. He's going to go in for the touchdown. Leroy Kelly circles left end for one yard, and for the first time this afternoon, the Cleveland Browns go out in front, 22 to 20. The ball is down, the kick is up in the air, and it's good. The time is called 13.52, left in the ball game here at the Municipal Stadium. Browns now lead for the first time, 23 to 20. Virgil Carter drops back to pass. Has good protection, throws down the middle, it's intercepted by Eric Barnes, 25, 20, 15, 10, he's down to the six-yard line. Eric Barnes picks off Virgil Carter's pass, intended for Bruce Coslett. And the Browns, who lead 23 to 20, are right back in scoring position at the six-yard line. He intercepted at the 25. He got a hand on the ball, popped it up in the air, and then Barnes caught it. So first and goal for the Browns, actually about five and a half yards away. When they've been down there close, they've scored. Handoff goes to Scott. He plunges down to about the one-yard line as he goes in off left tackle. And they open up the hall over there, Damari and Chaprap. Bill Berge finally dropped him, and he's just about at the one-yard line. And the Browns are just that far away from taking a 10-point lead in this ball game. Handoff goes to Scott. Running wide to the right. He's down very close to the goal line. He's in. Touchdown. Oh, Scott goes off right tackle for a yard and a touchdown. The intercepted pass set it up, and the Browns are now ahead 29 to 20. Don Cockroft will attempt the extra point. Mike Phipps will hold. Kick is up and good. So with 23 left in the football game now here at Municipal Stadium in Cleveland. Score is now the Browns 30, the Bengals 20. Carter again goes back to pass. Has protection down the middle. Coslett has it at midfield, and he's down by Ernie Kellerman. Bruce Coslett catches his first pass of the afternoon. It's a 13-yard slip from Virgil Carter. And another Bengal first down right at midfield. 
Again, Carter drops back to pass, has protection, fires out in the flat, it's complete to Coslett at the 40, and he's down at the 35 by Ernie Kellerman at the 34. Kellerman got him around the ankles, and if he hadn't stopped him, Coslett was full. Twice this afternoon, Carter has missed Bruce Coslett, once a sure touchdown down at the five-yard line. Coslett has played all the way at tight end in place of injured Bob Trump. He had not caught a pass until his fourth quarter. Now he's taken in two quick ones. Carter drops back to pass. Now he's running to the left. Looking, he's down to the 40. Throws. It's complete to Cowsled at the 15-yard line, and he's down. He got away from Ernie Kellerman. Kellerman knocked him down finally at the 15-yard line, and the Bengals have another first down. The Bengals are really going to Bruce Cowsled now, matching him up with the Browns' strong safety, Ernie Kellerman. He's caught three for 13, 16, and now 19 yards. And that was a big third down play. The Bengals have it first and 10 of the 15. Again, Carter goes back to pass. Look, Speedy Thomas at the five, touchdown! Speedy Thomas got away from Eric Barnes and Mike Howell, ran a post pattern, slanted right in toward the goalpost, caught the ball at about the three or four yard line and went in, and now it's 30 to 26. The Browns are looking for an onside kick, and let's see what Horst will do. Vance is on the ball at the line drive kick. It'll carry back into the end zone. Five yards deep, out comes Thomas. He's at the 10, to the 15, to the 20, and knocked down, maybe just shy of the 20 yard line. And off goes to Bo Scott, running, he's out at the 28, 29, 30, into the 33-yard line, and he has the first down. Placed in right off right tackle, got good blocking over there from Hickerson and Safoni, and the Browns have a most crucial third down. Finally, Fletcher Smith and Ron Carpenter hauled him down. Now we're down to the two-minute mark, one minute and 50 seconds to go. Nelson with the ball, goes back to pass. Looks, fires out in the flat, it's caught at the 45-yard line, and Russell out of bounds, and the Browns have a first down. It was Nelson to Gary Collins. Oh, my. Third down, and about five yards to go, and he completed a pass good for nine yards, and the Browns have a first down, and will hold on to the ball. And off to Leroy Kelly, up the middle to, in the Bengals territory, down to the 45-yard line, and he almost broke it all away. Royce Berry, Ken Avery, Al Coleman, Ken Dyer, all there to make the tackle, and he picked up just about 10 yards on the play. 10 seconds showing on the clock. The Bengals, of course, will rush with everything they have. Snap from center is good. Cockroft gets the kick away. It's a high spiral. It bounces down at about the three-yard line and goes into the end zone. Two seconds show on the clock. The official stop time. And that's the time the remaining as the Bengals will be on their 20-yard line. Started with the ball going back to pass. Look. Now it's hit and drop back at the nine-yard line by Gregory. And that's the end of the ball game. Ron Gregory stripped it through the knockdown Carter, and the Cleveland Browns have won it here 30 to 27 in a wild, wild offensive struggle. Pat Manson getting up rather slowly on the last play of the ball game. And the booze pour out. Booze may have been for, I think, for Coach Paul Brown. Walking over to the uh, dugout leading to the runway and back to the Cincinnati Bengals dressing room.